I've got a new mini camcorder in for review. This one claims to be the smallest 720p camcorder in the world, and it's called the Y3000. Now, I don't know if its claim of being the smallest in the world is true, but it certainly is small. You may recognize the design of the camera as being a copy of the Chobi One, but there are some significant differences between this camera and the Chobi, so let's compare the specs. Well, the Chobi One costs over 100 pounds, it only records at 640x480 and has optional detachable wide angle and fisheye lenses. My Y3000 cost me £37. It records at 1280x720 and has a permanently fitted lens. The specs on the box also claim that it will take 8 megapixel stills and support SDHC cards up to 32 gigabytes in size. And usefully, it can record and charge at the same time, and it offers recycled recording, which means it records a new file every three minutes, and when the card is full, it records over the oldest one. So in this review, I'll see if all the specs and features on the box are accurate, and more importantly, we'll see how the quality of the video compares against its main mini HD camera competitor, the HD808 number 11 keyring camera. This camera has a micro USB 8 pin socket rather than the more common mini USB connector. It comes with the appropriate lead in the box for charging and data transfer. And the other items in the box are the instructions, a keyring, a lanyard and a disc that contains copies of the instructions, some promotional photos and the drivers for using it as a VGA webcam. For a novelty item it's quite professionally packaged. Looking at the camera itself, it weighs 17 grams, and it's modelled after an SLR camera. Now, of course, the LCD screen on the back is fake, and all the operation is controlled by a single shutter button on the top. There's a blue LED indicator light on the left, and the lens is on the front, and as mentioned before, it can't be unscrewed. On the front of the camera above the lens are two tiny holes. The one on this side is the microphone, and on this side is the reset button. The bottom of the camera houses the micro USB socket, and a micro SDHC spring-loaded card slot that supports cards up to 32GB in size. Having the USB socket on the bottom will make it a little bit tricky to mount if you want to use it as a webcam. Right, I'll quickly explain the operation of the camera and then we can move on to the more interesting test footage. Now the camera's a little bit sluggish in operation, but to switch it on, you hold down the button until the blue light comes on. Now it's in standby mode and it'll stay here for three minutes and switch itself off unless we do something. So we'll tap the button and that flash means that it's took a photo. Now to take a video, you hold it down for two seconds and the light starts flashing and that means it's now taking video. To stop it, you tap the button again and it goes back into standby. And then if you want to switch it off, you hold the button down until the blue light goes out and that means the camera's off. Right, so over the course of a week, I took the camera out and about and shot some video in different situations. So let's have a look at that. Now, the first thing you might notice is that the footage doesn't have an annoying time and date stamp on it. Now, you can switch this on if you want, but it's set to off out of the box, so that's how I've left it. And the other thing you'll have noticed is that the footage is nice and sharp, and it's definitely in HD. Now, it is a little bit grainy at times, and that's because of the less sophisticated encoding used by the MP4 AVI files than the H.264 MOV files used by the 808 camera. And I'll be comparing them side by side later on so you can see the difference. And another difference between the file formats is that 10 minutes of footage on this uses just over one gigabyte of storage, which is roughly double the size of the H.264 files encoded by the keyring camera. You might notice the occasional drop frame, and this is using a Class 6 SDHC card. When I use my Class 4 card, there were even more drop frames. So as a result, I've ordered a Class 10 card, although that hasn't turned up yet. And I'll let you know on my website if that eliminates the drop frame issue completely. Now you might remember from the specifications that the camera claims to take 5 megapixel stills, so we'll test that out. So here's a scene on video, and here's the same scene as a still. And you'll notice that the still is just cropping out the middle of the 16.9 video. 
and as far as I can tell there's very little extra resolution in the picture. So I'd just forget stills if I was you and stick to shooting video with this camera. Now it's time to compare the footage from the camera against the HD808 number 11 keyring camera which also records at 1280x720p at 30 frames a second and if you haven't seen my review of this camera be sure to check it out. There's really very little to choose between the two cameras but if you just look at the sky on this shot you'll see that the Y3000 exposes it properly whereas the HD808 overexposes it and bleaches it out. Now if we look at an indoor shot you'll see that the HD808 is a little bit softer in the image and slightly yellowish tinged when compared to the Y3000. Now the Y3000 is definitely sharper but it's a little bit grainy at times. Now I thought that the HD808 also has slightly smoother movement but I don't know why that is because I've counted the frames and both cameras are definitely shooting at 30 frames a second. Now if we just freeze an image here we can compare the sharpness on a zoomed in section. Now I own two 808 cameras and this is definitely the sharpest of the two of them but when we compare it to the Y3000 it's just slightly softer although there's not an awful lot in it to be honest. One area that the 808 does beat the Y3000 though is in sound quality. Just listen to this section that I recorded inside HMV. And now compare that with what the HD808 hears. So if you get a Y3000, don't plan on using it to record any sound. And for the final bit of comparison footage, I strapped both cameras to my motorbike. Now I've mentioned a couple of times that the AVI files can tend to look a little bit grainy and as an example if we zoom in on this dark section at the bottom of the picture you can see that there's quite a bit of blocking visible and also if we look at this area of blue you can see that there's quite obvious banding. But one area that the Y3000 is better is dealing with light and dark. Just look at this scene here and then notice the flashing that you get on the HD808 footage. The charging on this camera is a little bit weird. The blue light is supposed to flash while the camera is charging and then stay on permanently when it's finished charging but with me the blue light always came on permanently after only about 15 minutes. Now when I tried using the camera after 15 minutes worth of charging the battery only lasted 15 minutes. Now when I charged the camera for an hour the battery lasted 42 minutes and charging it any longer didn't extend that so I'd recommend always charging for an hour. And I mentioned it before but it's worth repeating, make sure you're using at least a class 6 card and if possible a faster one, otherwise you'll just get jerky video. Now I've got to tell you about an issue that I had with the cycle recording function. This camera records its footage in 3 minute segments and when the memory card's full it re-records over the oldest segment. Now if you've got an 8GB card in the camera you'll find that the battery runs out before the card's full so really cycle recordings designed to be used whilst the camera's being continuously powered via its USB socket and this is where I hit the problem. I just couldn't get the camera to record and charge at the same time. The blue light's flashing on this camera which means it's recording 
Now when I plug in the supplied USB lead, you'll see that the blue light starts flashing quicker. And that means it's actually charging and not recording. And you can see that it's stopped recording because when I pull the lead out, the blue light goes out. Now I found through trial and error that when I used a different micro USB lead that came with a Bluetooth headset that I've got, the blue light carried on flashing as normal. And I tested this out and it did continuously re-record for over three hours until I switched it off. So it turns out that the camera can record and charge at the same time, just not using the micro USB lead that's supplied in the box. I'm always amazed by the number of people that want to use these mini cameras as webcams. I mean, they will do it, but that's not what they're designed for. But it seems like most of the questions that I get on the video reviews that I do, people are always asking about where can they get the drivers from to use it as a webcam. Well, it comes with the drivers on the disc, but it turns out that when you use the camera as a webcam, you get these strange blue lines across everything. So if you want a webcam, go and get yourself a flipping webcam, because this one doesn't work. Right, well it's decision time. Which mini camera is the best? Is it the Y3000 or is it the HD808? Well ultimately it depends on what you want to use the camera for. For attaching it to my bike to use as a mini journey logger or incident camera, I think I prefer the Y3000. It's the only one of the two that offers cycle recording and the quality of the video is slightly sharper than my HD808 which might be useful for reading registration numbers. The fact the files are twice the size doesn't really bother me because with it continuously re-recording and erasing them, it doesn't matter. It also seems less prone to randomness than my HD808, which just seems to stop recording whenever it feels like, and I can leave the Y3000 recording for hours on end without any problem. On the other hand, the HD808 takes smoother video and is quicker to use. So I'll be keeping this one in my pocket for recording anything unusual that happens whilst I'm out and about. So the choice is yours, hopefully I've helped you make an informed decision. I'll try and preempt a couple of questions. Can you turn off cycle recording? No. Can you increase the length of the recorded segments from three minutes? No. But if there are any more frequently asked questions, I'll post them with answers on the page at the end of this video. There'll be some more information about the camera on my website, together with some sample photos that I took with it. And when that class 10 card arrives, I'll put some information on there as to whether or not it eliminated the dropout problem. But for the moment, Thanks for watching.